transistor at the nanoscale must be described by quantum mechanics. In this video, we discuss how one can formulate a quantitative model for nanoscale transistor that captures the salient features in both the subthreshold and saturation regime using the Landauer approach, which also recovers the equilibrium conductance at near equilibrium. Let's begin. Part 1. The Textbook MOSFET There are different kinds of transistors, but we are interested in the one that is the main workhorse for today's semiconductor computing devices, the MOSFET, or the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. The MOSFET is a three-terminal device, which consists of the top metal gate, an ultra-thin gate oxide layer, a high-quality crystalline silicon channel, and heavily doped source and drain contacts. We shall label the three electrical terminals at the gate, source and drain as VG, VS and VD respectively. By convention, we set VS to be our reference voltage, or VS equals zero, and the current that flows between the source and drain contact is denoted as ID. If you have taken an undergraduate course in circuits or semiconductor devices, you should have seen the transistor IV characteristics. At small VD, the ID increases linearly with VD. We call this the linear regime of operation. At large VD, the current saturates, and this saturation regime is key to its operation as an amplifier. At intermediate VD, the ID can be described as follows, and this is known as the triode regime. Here, VT is the threshold voltage of the MOSFET. The symbol mu refers to the electron mobility. But what does this even mean for the nanoscale transistor where the electrons can traverse the source and drain ballistically? As we shall see later, mobility is no longer a good transport coefficient in the quantum regime. The gate voltage VG also controls the current and the point of saturation, and allows circuit designer to tune the biasing point of the amplifier. In fact, the VD where saturation occurs is given by VG minus VT. With the scaling of the silicon MOSFET into the nanometer regime, and the number of transistors approaching 100 billions per chip, the silicon channel is now comprising of less than 100 atoms between the source and drain. The current voltage characteristics of such a nanoscale transistors has clearly entered the quantum regime. What will be the current voltage transfer characteristics of a nanoscale MOSFET? That will be the topic of discussion today. Part 2. The Landauer Picture in 1957, Rolf Landauer from IBM proposed a physically intuitive way to view electron transport through a ballistic conductor. He suggested that electron transport should be viewed from the electrical contacts, where electrons have well-defined equilibrium properties. It is from these contacts where electrons are injected into the conductor ballistically. Let's begin with the energy band diagram along the channel direction from the source to drain. It depicts the spatial profile of the conduction band edge. The top gate electrostatically modulates the channel profile. At thermal equilibrium, the Fermi levels in the different regions must align, and the electrons are filled up to the Fermi energy. Without loss of generality, we can assume the voltages at the three terminals are set at zero. At equilibrium, the electron injected from the source and drain contacts balance out, and no net current flows. Now, consider a positive drain voltage, which pulls the drain conduction band lower. An energy window for transport is now opened. However, the barrier blocks the electron transport from the source to drain. Quantum mechanics require finite electron tunneling across the barrier, and can be quite pronounced when the channel length approaches the nanometer regime. Since the transistor usually operates at room temperature, there will be thermal electrons above the Fermi level. It is customary to denote the electrons in the transport energy windows below and above the Fermi energy as cold and hot electrons respectively. We turn on the transistor by applying the gate voltage to lower the channel barrier. Now, Electrons can transmit unimpeded across the channel, leading to exponentially larger current compared to the off-state. 
the Landauer picture is a transport theory from the point of view of the contacts. The contacts are macroscopic thermal baths, with well-defined Fermi energy, herein denoted as EF and EF prime for the source and drain contacts. The electrons in the source contact are populated according to the Fermi-Dirac function where occupation is greater or smaller than half when its energy is higher or lower than EF as depicted here. Source electrons with finite occupation can transmit across the channel. And we characterize the transmission coefficient as T, where the subscript K refers to the electron wave vector. This dependence will be made explicit in later discussion. The electron occupation on the drain side will in general be different from the source, due to the applied drain voltage VD. Drain electrons with finite occupation can also transmit across the channel to the source, in accordance to the same transmission coefficient T as before. Quantitatively, the total current will be given by the sum of all injected current fluxes from the source and drain summed over all electron states. Since the source and drain current are opposing, a non-zero net current arises if and only if there is an imbalance between the source and drain Fermi levels. Any applied bias between the two contacts, VD, will produce a difference in the occupation functions, whose signs dictate the direction of the current. You can also find more discussions about the Landauer approach to quantum transport in our graphene device series. Part 3. Deriving the IV formula. We are now ready to work out the explicit expression for the current voltage relation in our transistor. Here, we assume a two-dimensional electron gas, such as the inversion layer at the silicon oxide interface. Recall that the top gate controls the shape of the channel barrier, as shown. The 2D Hamiltonian consists of the kinetic and potential energy. For the kinetic part, we assume translation symmetry for Y, thus allowing us to replace the momentum operator PY with the wave vector KY. This allows us to partition the energy into the transverse and longitudinal pieces, denoted as E K Y and E X respectively. Thus, we are reduced to solving only a one-dimensional scattering transport problem along X. This scattering problem can be solved using different approaches we discussed in previous videos, such as the transfer matrix, finite difference method, among others, and the transmission function T can be obtained. For each transverse mode KY, it yields the same transmission function, but shifted in energy as depicted. The total current, as according to the Landauer approach can then be written as the total injected current flux from the left and right contacts, where we must integrate over the longitudinal and transverse energies. The proportionality factor is given by the degeneracy factor multiplies by electronic charge divided by Planck constant. This is known the Landauer formula a result we derived in previous video. To solve this analytically, we need to replace the discrete sum with its integral version, a trick often used in our previous videos. We shall also remind you the explicit form of the two Fermi functions in the source and drain contacts, with the shifted drain Fermi energy we discussed in last chapter. Is it possible to further simplify this expression for the current? First, we must address how to tackle the integral of the Fermi functions as highlighted. For this, let's take a short detour to discuss the general class of Fermi-Dirac integrals. The Fermi-Dirac integrals, herein denoted by Fn, are often encountered in semiconductor physics and devices. We see that when n is zero, the integrand is just the Fermi-Dirac function. This is the mathematical gamma function, whose values are well known, and can be obtained with scientific calculator. Approximations for this Fermi-Dirac integral exists in the limiting cases as shown. For our current discussion later, we will be interested in the so-called degenerate limit. Or in other words, the Fermi energy is much larger than the thermal energy. In what follows, we will be interested only in the n equals to minus one half case. We shall express the solution in terms of this Fermi-Dirac integral, whose value can be easily computed numerically, or via lookup tables. And the degenerate limit approximation yields us the following simple expression. 
This is the precise mathematical identity we shall exploit in the last chapter of this video. Back to the problem. We would like to evaluate the integral of the Fermi-Dirac functions over the transverse momenta ky. Let's start with the source Fermi function. First, we write out the source Fermi function in the integrand explicitly. Quick reminder that the E ky is the transverse energy and depends on ky quadratically. Thus, we can replace the integral over ky to E ky instead. Introducing the new dimensionless variable y for the transverse energy, we can rewrite the integral as shown. This allows us to express our solution in terms of the Fermi-Dirac integral of minus one half as shown. Going through similar math, we can also replace the integral over the drain Fermi function with its Fermi-Dirac integral of minus one half. With this, we arrived at the final expression for the drain current in terms of the Fermi-Dirac integrals of minus one half. This expression is solvable if we know what is the transmission function t. Recall that we derived this for a transistor with two-dimensional electron gas, such as the case is illustrated. Here, the transmission function can be approximated by the WKB tunneling formula for a rectangular barrier, where U0 is the energy of the channel barrier and L is the length of the barrier. U0 is controlled by the gate voltage, and its explicit dependence can also be worked out if the device geometry is given. This current can be solved numerically, and the MATLAB script for it is in the description section. Part 4. Drain Biasing and Current Saturation we are now ready to see the IV characteristics of our nanoscale MOSFET. Let's consider a 50 nanometer long channel, and a source doping of 0.2 electron volts as shown. We consider the on state, where the channel barrier is lower than the source Fermi energy, herein set to be U0 equals to 0.125 EV. The calculated drain current from our model is plotted as function of the drain voltage VD. Just like the classic MOSFET, we can clearly identify the linear and saturation regime. It is interesting that the quantum ballistic model also reproduces the salient features of the classic MOSFET. However, the physics for the current saturation is different in this case. We notice that the onset of saturation is around 0.075 volts, which coincides with the energy transport window above the barrier. Here, we generate the IV curves for different U0, which controls the onset of saturation and the saturation current, much like what one expects for classic MOSFET. Part 5. Gate Biasing and Subthreshold Let's consider the transistor in the off state, where the channel barrier is visibly above the source Fermi energy. Here, we assume the VD biased at 0.1 volt. Due to finite temperature, the electron distribution has a characteristic Fermi tail, whose distribution at high energies can be described by an exponential function as shown. Current in this off state is dominated by this Fermi tail, and is also known as the subthreshold regime. If we ask the question, what is the barrier modulation to affect an order of magnitude change in the current? At room temperature of 300 Kelvin, one can show that the barrier modulation is 60 milli electron volts. Or we say, the current has a subthreshold slope or swing of 60 mV per decade. Here, we plot the current as a function of the barrier height U0, ranging from 0.1 to 0.4 electron volts. Roughly speaking, when U0 is higher than EF, we are in the subthreshold regime, as highlighted in the plot. Indeed, the subthreshold slope is 60 mV per decade at 300 kelvins. When the temperature is reduced to 200 kelvin, we see that the subthreshold slope also reduced accordingly, to 40 mV per decade. We stress here that the subthreshold behavior is purely just carrier statistics. Part 6. Near Equilibrium Result In previous video, we learned that the zero temperature conductance is given by the quantum of conductance multiplied by the number of transport modes. In a conventional 2D electron gas, we can replace the Fermi wave vector in terms of its effective mass and Fermi energy as shown. 
We want to check that the current expression we derived for nanoscale MOSFET reduces to this expression in the limiting case. Let's start with the expression for the drain current we derived earlier, in terms of the Fermi-Dirac integrals as shown. If we take the zero temperature limit, then the Fermi-Dirac integrals of minus one half can be approximated by its expression in the degenerate limit. Thus, the integrand now involved only the square root of energies. With some simple algebra, we can factor out one of the square root. Now, we have the current expression for the zero temperature limit. We can further take the limit of zero bias, which is the limit where conductance is being defined. Here, the square root can be Taylor expand up to the linear term in VD. With this, we arrived at a closed form expression for the current, at zero temperature and in the limit of small VD bias. It is then straightforward to see that the conductance indeed recovers the well-known conductance formula we have derived in previous video. This wraps up our discussion on the introduction to the physics of the nanoscale transistor. We hope you find this useful and see you in the next video.